Hi there and welcome to tutorial 3 on the quick sort algorithm as it appears on the Edexcel Decision 1 Maths A level. As always this is probably applicable to most other Decision Maths uh, modules at A level. For more help on any of your math studies, GCSE or A level, see my YouTube channel at Hegarty Maths or my website as below. Firstly, let's take a look at what Edexcel tell us we need to know about the quick sort. In green is what we've done already. We've done what algorithms are and we've done what the bubble sort is. Now we're moving on to the quick sort. Now a key bit of information from the specification from Edexcel, it says when using the quick sort algorithm, the pivot should be chosen as the middle item of the list and above it says whenever finding the middle item of any list, the method defined in the glossary must be used. So I'm going to point out to you specifically what Edexcel wants you to find when they're asking you for the middle number and you're going to need that for the quicksort. Okay, what is the quicksort? Well, as it suggests, the quicksort puts items into an order but very, very quickly, rather like the Usain Bolt of algorithms. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay, so what it does um, it answers the same old questions as the bubble sort did. It puts a set of numbers in ascending order or descending order or alphabetical order. And the point of it is it's supposed to be quite quick at doing this process for us. Okay, so we're going to have a go at a few examples as always. And you're going to have to try and do it yourself. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to how the algorithm works and what this middle number of uh, a list of numbers is all about because these are the keys to doing the examples. So a quick talk about the method then the examples. Here we go. This is what the quick sort algorithm uh, tells you to do if you're in black working out the ascending, uh, the list in ascending order. You choose an item to be the middle number. I'm going to talk about how to get this. Then that's going to be your pivot. That's where you're going to do uh, your first set of work. You're going to then write down all items less than your pivot, okay, and keeping them in the order they arrive in the sublist, okay, and then you're going to write your pivot down. After that, you're going to write the remaining numbers down that were greater than the pivot. Then what you're going to do is you're going to have yourself two new sublists now, and you're going to go through points one to four for each of the sublists to find a new midpoint. Um, write down all the numbers lower than it, then write the pivot, then write the bigger ones for each of the two sublists. And you're going to keep on going until every item in your list has been chosen as a pivot. At that point you stop and they are in order. Just notice for descending uh, you write down items bigger than. Okay, a lot to take in there. It's only going to really make sense when, when we do an example. But before we do that we have to talk about what this midpoint thing is all about. Now, the midpoint or middle number this is what it says in the specification or in the glossary. It says that in a list containing n items, the middle has position a half n plus 1 if n is odd or a half n plus 2 if n is even. So if n is 9, the middle number is the fifth and if n is 6, it's the fourth. Okay, what that really means, uh, an easy way of thinking of it, at my point of view, is if you've got an odd uh, list of numbers, odd number of numbers, of numbers, the middle is where you think it is. The middle is the middle. Okay, so for example, if you had nine numbers, because they split into four, one, and four, the middle is the isolated number in the middle itself. Okay, but if you have an even number, then the middle is half of the number plus one. Okay, so if you've got ten numbers, okay, i.e., uh, you know, they split into five and five, they don't have a unique middle, half of, uh, of uh, ten is five, and you add one, the middle number would be the sixth number. Okay, so um, it, it's as simple as that, really. If you've got an odd number of numbers, the middle is where you think it would be. If, the ev if you've got an even number, it's sort of one more to the right than you think it might be. Okay? Right, let's go for an example and apply the algorithm. Here we go. Using the quick sort algorithm, put these in ascending order. 
That means you're going from small to big. Okay, first thing you do, you write down the numbers. Then you count how many you've got. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got nine numbers. So the middle happens in the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's an odd number. Right, now you're going to write down anything that's smaller than 23 in the order it comes. So 21 is, 24 is not, 42 is not, 29 is not, 13 is, 8 is, and that's it. Then the uh, algorithm tells you to write down your pivoted number, 23. Then you write down anything bigger than that as it arose. So 24, 42, 29, 39, and 38. By the way, uh, I'm going to introduce a bit of method for you. In the exam questions, they tell you to clearly state your pivot. Now, we're going to circle them, but at each stage, state what you pivoted. So at this point, I pivoted 23. So call that pivot column, just to label what you pivoted. Now, I'm going to, I've am going i got a sublist of 3 and a sublist of 5. The middle is going to be 13 here. Uh, so the middle of 3 is the second, and the middle of 5 is the third. So my pivots here are 13 and 29. Just make it clear what you're doing. Okay, it helps you get full marks. Right, out of these three, okay, I'm going to write down anything that's smaller than 13. So that's 8. Then I'm going to write my 13 down because that's the only thing left. And then write down anything bigger than 13, which is 21. I'm going to write my 23, which is pivoted. Out of these uh, five here, write down anything smaller than 29. So that's simply the... 24, then I'm going to write my 29, which was pivoted, then I'm going to write the ones that are bigger in the order they came, so 42, 39, and 38. Okay, now I'm going to decide on new pivots. Here, that's going to be pivoted because it's a sole number, that's going to be pivoted because it's a sole number, okay, that's going to be pivoted because it's on its own, and out of the last three, the middle is going to be pivoted, 39. Okay, and now I'm going to write down my numbers again, 8, 13, 21, 23, 24, 29. I'm going to write down anything smaller than 39, which is 38. Then I'm going to write my 39 down, and my 42. That was pivoted, and all of these have been pivoted. Okay, and I've done that. And lastly, I'm going to pivot on... These two now, the 38 and the 42, so the 38 and the 42 now get pivoted. And now I've got the numbers 8, 13, 21, 23, 24, 29, 38, 39 and 42. And they are in the order ascending as required. Okay, let's move on to another example. Um, here's example two, and we're going to use the quick sort to put these in descending order. Okay, so we're going to sort these in descending order using the quick sort. First thing you do is write the numbers down. Next thing I said that I want you to do is I want you to write an extra column called a pivot column just to make clear what you're pivoting each time. Right, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. So the pivot, the middle happens at the six. One, two, three, four, five, and six here. You're going in descending order, so you're going from big to small. Write down anything bigger than 41 that comes up. So 44 is the first, then 50, uh, and then you write your 41 down, and then write anything smaller than it as it rose. So that's the 37, the 20, the 17, the 26, the 27, the 28, and the 17. <clears throat> Okay, so you pivoted on 41. Now you're going to decide a new pivot. You've got a sublist of 2, pivot on the 50, write that down. You've got a sublist of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you're going to pivot on the fourth one, which is 26. Okay, so out of these two, write down, any, write down anything bigger than 50. There isn't anything. So write your 50, then write your 44, then your 41. And then out of this, write down anything bigger than 26. That's 37 as it arises, 27, 28. Then write your 26 and write the smaller ones, which are 20, 
17 and 17. Okay, now you're going to pivot on this sole one that's left over here, so this 44, you're going to pivot on that. You've got a sublist here of 3, so you're going to pivot on the 27, and you've got a sublist here of 3, you're going to pivot on that 17. Okay, so um, let's write down, you've got your 50, your 44, okay, your, uh, your 41. You're pivoting on this 27 out of these three numbers. Write down anything bigger than 27, which is the 37 and the 28, and then write down your 27, which was your pivot. Write your 26, which was your pivot. And these three you're getting pivoted, so write anything bigger than 17, which is just the 20, and write your 17 and 17. Now write down what you're going to pivot on. You've only got two here, so uh, out of these two, pivot on the second one. You've got one here, pivot on that, and one here, pivot on that. So that was 28, 20, and 17, get pivoted. So you write 50, 44, 41. This is now, uh, these two, um, write down anything that's bigger than 28, which is the 37, then your 28, then your 27, then your 26, then your 20, then your 17, and then your 17. And you've only got one number left, so pivot on that 37. And that's it, everything's been pivoted. So they are in descending order, 50, 44, 41, 37, 28, 27, 26, 20, 17, and 17. And they are in perfect order for you now, and you have done. Okay, now I think it's time for you to do a few examples yourself. There are two questions here. I would like you to have a go at these, pause the video, work through them, and then mark your answers against mine. So here we go. Here are the two questions. Pause, work through, and then mark your work. So I'm going to show you the answers now. I would expect you to have laid your work out exactly like I did. Here's the answer to question one um, and here's a pivot column as well. Pause the video and check you've got the same. And the answer to question two, again a pivot column, pause the video and check you've got the same. Okay and that's everything there is to know about the quick sort algorithm. And just to finish off, here is homework and further study. Please look in your Decision 1 Edit Cell book, okay, and read Chapter 1, pages 12 and 13, just to recap everything that's come up in this video. Then do Exercise 1C, Question 2A and B on page 13. That will just refresh and be two more examples for you to do. After that, make sure you go onto my past paper Question 3 video, where I answer all the questions that have come up, on the quick sort algorithm in the past papers so you can work through those to check your understanding at an exam standard. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you found it useful in your D1 study.